Director Eric Mati. We have beside me the executive producer of On the Job, The Missing Eight, and president of Reality MM Studios, Mr. Don Don Monteverde. And of course, the brilliant Mr. John Arcelia, who is what? Con alongside Gerard Depardieu, Brad Pitt lang naman. Sino pa ba yung mga Sean Penn? Oh yes, let's not forget him. Yes, twice, huh? Oh, so you have a, a, a record to beat. Yes. <laughs> You're up to the challenge. We have Don Don De Leon, is she joining us? Yes. Hi, Don in the past town. Hi, Lot Lot, galing, galing mo. <laughs> of course, for John Arcelia, this is just like a homecoming of sorts because this was your home for yeah. what, almost 20 years. 20 years. So how did winning the Volpe Cup change your life? It did not. <laughs> it did not. Right? Oh, huh? <laughs> because it is just like an affirmation that, that um, I, I, I think recognitions are just affirmations that uh, we are on the right track. And what we're trying to, to, to achieve is actually happening. So, uh, it, you know, I, ko, hindi. Uh, pa ako, hindi. I, I mean, you know, in the very first place is I would be more happier at magyayabang kung ang bansa natin ay nakalampas na sa mga gaitong krisis na nararanasan natin. <laughs> you, issued, you issued a challenge in your speech earlier. You issued a challenge yeah, to all of that's, us. Yeah, that's, yeah. What will we do? You saw the film? What will we do? Nah, yes. So what do you want us to do? I mean, I, I, I'm asking everyone because, you know, I, I mean, one person could just do it alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. I don't know. <laughs> Let's tell everybody to watch HBO Go, to watch the film on HBO Go. That's one thing that I suppose we should do because especially we are about to elect our leaders in the country and this film should awaken their eyes, their yes. people. Or open their eyes. <laughs> But in terms of offers, I'm sure they're like a flooding now, flooding your desk, your... Not like a tidal wave, but there's a lot. <laughs> there are a lot. There are a lot. <laughs> Very challenging ones? Uh, some of them, yes, yes, yes. And good contracts, yes. Great. Yes. So that has changed your life. Or uh, they would have come anyway without your winning... Uh, before the, the Volpe Cup, uh, these things are actually slowly coming. Mm -hmm. And then after the Volpe Cup, uh, a lot of, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, please join in. Let's not make it too formal. <laughs> like, you know, salita, then Eric. Yeah, okay. So, but what was, how did you study the role of the journalist? What prepared you for that role? Did you observe any... Um, Journalists, so how did you... We grew up watching uh, uh, anchors in television and, and listening to radio, especially those uh, who, who are actually uh, 50 years old here in the I mean, you know, we, we used to, to listen to radio. And then, uh, whether we like or not, we had some favorites. So somehow, um, uh, I have a lot of characters in my mind. But I have to make Sisoy a unique character, different from all of them. I, I tried to get some small uh, nuances from, from the, my favorite anchors, but slowly the, the, those um, uh, characteristics of, of each character slowly diminish while I'm actually creating uh, Sisoy. Mm -hmm. And I, I was a mass communication graduate. I had a, a radio production. I, 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 uh, I had maybe uh, another major of mine is TV production. So uh, before uh, I became so busy with, with the mainstream, I have already also uh, uh, experienced uh, doing it in radio. Mm -hmm. So it was something of second, second nature to you in a way. 
Yes, and then and, and, uh, one thing, uh, usually radio announcers, they play with their voice. Yes. They're sometimes, parang, uh, they're so funny also with their voice, no? parang yun yung pangakit sa audience. Yeah. And somehow, siguro isa yun sa medyo mahilig akong gawin. It's because I, 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 uh, I used to do musicals and I really love singing. Yeah, you had the chance to show off your singing skills. Bigay na bigay. Direct. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Let me go to uh, Direct Eric Mati here. Um, I hope you will be as candid as you are in your Instagram account. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it. Was the pandemic a big hindrance? I mean, uh, it took what, almost four years no, to finish this film? Well, we had, uh, in the tail end of shooting, we had the last remaining four days. And uh, the, the toughest part is, we, we finished the rest of the film, except for the last four days. The toughest part was, uh, those four days was the massacre of uh, Christopher De Leon's car. Uh, and, and their uh, co-employees, and then the finale, which is where John hits the car and the shootout happens. So um, when when the pandemic loosened up around uh, July, August, mm -hmm. that's around that time, we tried to shoot it, we went to Cavite. And good thing, the last remaining shoots were all exteriors, so it was open. There were, there were no vaccines yet at that time. Um, so there, there were just four crucial shots that that you had to finish. Four to, major scenes, yeah, major that, that, we, that we had to finish. Mm -hmm. um, which is uh, in the height of pandemic, we have that long road sequence with the with the guys who's gonna be killed. So there's Christopher there inside a car. Yes. Um, so we. we you had to be really careful. There's also one scene, the chase scene. And with a child. Yeah. That, with a, yeah. 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 So you were saying before I interrupted you guys. No, uh, with John also. Ah, yes. Uh, John and the children of John. Um, so they were all, uh, we, we, we shot it for two days, uh, the inside of the car, mm -hmm. uh, and even Vantov. And, and so it, it's hard when it's contained. Mm -hmm. You had to be very careful and very quick, I suppose. Yeah. What inspired you to do this film? Of course, it's a sequel to, um, when was that? What year was that? When the first film of... Uh, uh, 2012. Um, it, it, it took a while to, for the inspiration to come in. Mm -hmm. When Don Don and uh, Glow decided that we need to continue doing on the job, we we had to find beyond the first one. We don't want to re redo the first one, like a continuation of people coming out of prison, killing. We had to find an inspiration by which to continue the second one. And there were four uh, topics that we were choosing from. So one is the gambling sector of the country, the other is journalism, and then we have uh, medical malfeasance, and, um, What's the last one? Um, Journalism. No, no there, there's another one. Anyway, so eventually, uh, it was during the Trump, uh, the winning of Trump, where Cambridge Analytica, the news came out on how they were tested in the Philippines prior to using it on Trump uh, for the Duterte winning. Uh, that that uh, that put us on a on a high alert. Yeah, high alert. <laughs> and, and so we started looking into journalism in general uh, on how it could be manipulated, on how uh, journalists could also be compromised. Um, uh, yeah, and, and eventually uh, we decided I think this is the way to go. But it took a, a long time because um, the shortcut we made really was uh, to talk to, for example, Lot Lot uh, about certain uh, characters that they could look up, uh, because in, in, we're not journalists, so so we're just we're just mostly basing it from how people talk and how 
people, uh, their convictions. And uh, some of our guests here earlier were uh, all the research people that we talked to. Uh, journalists. no longer here, journalists. Uh, Ed Linga was here. Um, uh, the probe guys, the probe uh, from probe production, we talked to them. Uh, Rafi Lerma, I think. I don't know if he's still around. I hope he drinks later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's it, yeah. So it w in the hope of changing society, what, is, what is, is that a motivation? That you will, you know, be able to wake people up or make them see an issue? Or is it because the topic is just so appealing to you? No. Um, there, I, I think Don Don could also uh, attest to it later. Um, we do movies that we do entertaining movies. Uh, I mean, we start with uh, we we don't mean to do like serious art house stuff. We do entertaining movies, but we want entertaining movies that matter, that that, that has insights that, that jolt you. Yeah, but we don't want. But what we don't want to do are advocacy films. Yeah. We don't want to do, it, it would have been easy for this film to be an advocacy film because I would just have said what I wanted to say. But instead, we wanted some balance to it. So you have a, you have a really straight arrow of a journalist that looking at you on some parts, it, you could also be the irritating straight arrow journalist even if she has so much integrity, right? And then you have someone whom you can judge in the beginning to be a eh, totalaga pantalaga how worst shall yeah. or how shall talaga to <laughs> itong reporter na to but then you, you see them change no and and i think i know that it could only happen in movies but that's what movies are for right we we could talk about things and we could show the change in just 2 hours which we couldn't possibly do in society easily right? here you see Sisoy in the first hour and a half being this arrogant, uh, fame whore, and then, right? And then midway, he becomes this serious... Uh, I was talking to... Um, I was talking to Cess earlier. Look at the irony of Christopher De Leon and Sisoy. What we all felt was the straight guy, the nicest guy in the room eventually became the compromised one. Yeah. And here you have him, whom we judge, wala na, hopeless na to. Hopeless na lang journalist na to, itong sisoy na to, kasi binabayaran siya ng mayor. But then he turns out to be so much better than his colleague who was judging him, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who looks more respectable than him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really be, uh, going to the edge, no? Yeah. Risking your life. <laughs> you were so brilliant in the film. Ha amazing. How, yeah. how, how do you do it? it, does it what's the preparation that's involved there? You know, you know I can speak for him. Oh, sige, please. Um, para, para hindi ko ano. Para hindi mo ka nagbab... Uh, uh, para sa hindi siya nagbabuat ng bago. I can speak for John. Um, this is a tough material to work on because it, just imagine the party scene, uh, the whole monologue, that was probably two, three pages long. That whole speech with Petrine, uh, that I grabbed the microphone, etc, etc. What you want from your actor is someone who, I, I didn't do, I just put him on stage. And then when we do rehearsals, I always ask the actors to do cold readings. I don't want them to act. So you, they go there, they go to their movement. It's my dream. Okay, okay, ready? Because if they have questions, then they'll ask me. But I don't know what he was gonna do. And yeah, they didn't and, tell him what he was gonna. Yeah, do. Uh, and then he did the, the whole thing. Uh, he, so he how probably is still planning, planning it. You there for? <laughs> huh? I mean, if he if you leave him to do it, yeah, you're just there to. Be the guy. I, I, I think it comes with preparation. Of course, we've had readings prior to that. We've had discussions about what this scene is about. Uh, but actually, with monologues like that, you can tell actors like 
uh, at this point, you, at this point uh, you know what I hate the most with direction is beats. Beat one, beat two, <laughs> beat three, beat you know, um, with, when you're dealing with a really good actor, you could find the beats will come out because the, the, they're, they're, they're savoring the, the scene and they're making it as real as, as they could. Um, so that's one. Um, he, he comes in prepared and he surprises you. Like, uh, my, 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 one of my fav favorite scenes of his is when he comes into the, to La Paz before Christopher fights with him. Mm -hmm. And then he has this panache of, what's up, people of La Paz? <laughs> 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 Those are all generous I mean, uh, The only instruction he got from me was, come in with a bang. I said, it's not in the script. But I just said, come in with a bang, oblivious that the whole office is like yeah. really scared because it's going to close down. Yeah. And he comes in there, what's up, people of La Paz? Uh, magaling, magaling. Now let's go to Lot. Uh, just a little. Um, I think. Um, Acting is so magical that you can only see the, the character from the outside, but we can actually see that character from the inside. Um, the, the description of, of uh, Sisoy is a corrupt uh, a radio journalist. Did I treat Sisoy as a corrupt uh, radio announcer? No. I will, since I will not just wake up um, one morning and say, I'm going to be a corrupt. Uh, uh, he has his life. He has to live. He is actually the protagonist in his story as, 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 as a person, as a character, as an actor, even in your own life. You are not the villain. You are not the corrupt. You are fighting for something. And then suddenly, boom, you saw that you discover that you are not actually fighting for something, but you're actually fighting for someone. And then you will now realize, and, and then there's the crisis for the, for the character to decide, or we call it the crux, no? That's the, the, the most colorful part of, of, of an actor when he, has, when he has to decide. That's really very colorful. Uh, whether to go with the other way or his way. So I think that is the magic of acting. Amazing. They're the smartest people no, in the world, I think. It takes so much intelligence. Let's go to Lot Lot. How was it for you to portray an embattled journalist? Um, <laughs> as mentioned by Derek Eric, uh, when we first met and he, when he told me about my character, he said, you watch the news, right? Uh, research this person. If I may mention uh, Shara Sembrano. Yes. Shara Sembrano. So I a started. Good friend and a really good journalist. Yes. And uh, since I also love watching the news and I grew up watching the news, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of some anchors as well, like John. And, uh, but it's different when you see journalists on the ground. When you see them standing there, saulan. May mga nagbabarilan, they're fighting, you know, they're in the middle of war or whatever. But they're there because they want the story to be told. They want the truth to be told. So this is what I put in Wen, more or less. Because she's very stubborn. <laughs> she's um, kind of self-righteous in a way. Um, which helped naman because she was able to push and guilt trip Sisoy. <laughs> into, you know, realizing at least na let's do something about what's happening because it's all wrong. So, uh, yeah, so... Did you ever get to meet with Shara Sabrano or you just watched her coverages? I, I watched her She was coverage. chased by the Chinese Coast Guard. <laughs> yes, I watched her um, a, with a lot of videos and some other journalists also as well. But we were able to chat on, I think, Direct Eric's Instagram and we said hello to each other there. But I would really <laughs> love to meet her one of these days in person. 
and she does she know that she, you she was uh, somehow a part yeah the, uh, the inspiration or so, somebody you observed yes i think it was told to her we we uh, directly mentioned to her i think yeah wow but so of course but of course she was so humble and said ganyan ba ako what can you say to about the situation of journalists at present who are you know continuing to do their work being exposed to so much risks especially in the heat of a political campaign uh, Ms. says I have so much respect for all journalists and reporters whose only intention is to tell the truth regardless of what they have ahead of them um, for their principles and their strength and the courage hindi po mababayaran yun so, um, Wang's character is for all the journalists and writers and reporters. I just have one question. Uh, I, I studied, I was a graduate of mass communication, and uh, we usually uh, use this sensationalism uh, as, as part of our job, like putting the headlines. We have to sensationalize the, the, the headlines so that we can get the attention of the viewers or that the audience. I'm just wondering if that those headlines can actually affect the, the kind of, of, of people that we have now, that they're becoming more emotional and not thinkers. Because because a majority of, of, of the, the Philipp, uh, not Philippine, of, of the people no, in, in, in a society are, are, are average to below average and they don't really just, uh, they don't really think they just look at the, the, the headlines. So, um, meron akong mga instances na nakakapanood sometimes, ang laki ng headline, and then, if you're going to think about it, magagalit ka dun sa, sa, sa subject. Pag pinanood mo yung, ano, yung, uh, yung clips, wala naman siyang sinabi ka. So, you know what, parang sabi ko, do we still uh, uh, self-regulate as, 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 uh, ano, as, as journalists or as networks? I mean, we, we, do we still talk about the effect of sensationalism uh, to, to, to our people? Because I think that also, that, that really affects uh, the, the kind of, of uh, massa that we have now. And who or, regulate it? Or clickbait as they call yes. it now, because online. Yes, and, and, and that, that, but, but on the flip side also of what uh, John is saying, uh, I think journalism also suffered a lot the past few years uh, because of social media. I think uh, their jobs have been endangered by um, bullying on social bullying media. and uh, uh, ngayon, ngayon parang everything is opinion, no? So parang um, of course partly CNN then the job very opinionated, uh, but but in in general, parang it's hard to be a journalist nowadays because. Because of all these trolls that can just tell you it's not true, fake, fake, right? Uh, so it's really hard uh, for your position. It's a different battle that the journalists are facing nowadays. Now let's go to Don Don. Your choice of um, issues to take up are rather bold, huh? I mean, dangerous, um, really, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what are what are the challenges that that you face in your choice of um, subject matter? Well, you know, uh, for me, you know, uh, Eric and I are always discussing about our next projects or whatever we're gonna do next. So, Shampi, we always want to put something in it. You know, just not a good narrative, but you know, there's a lot of lessons and insights that's happening around us. No? So I think we can actually clearly say or you know, communicate to our audience no, what we want them to hear out you know, from mm -hmm. what's really happening. So uh, for, for every movie naman that we do, to show that the challenges are that. No? So we just have to make sure that whatever film we do is very enjoyable for the audience. At the same time, we, we put in something that's happening out there so that we will be aware Mm -hmm. but, but well, there's so many relevant topics, but you can avoid the, you know, very uh, 
controversial, sensitive, that will challenge the powers that be. <laughs> I have a very, very controversial. Courageous. I have a very controversial partner here, today, as you know. So, bago pa, uh, even before the movie comes out, I think uh, people would already know the message that he he, he wants uh, to say. So, but then I think you know, with Eric Talaga, it's just, just the way he puts it together. It's not something that's very forceful that you see. But it's something that. Really comes in with the story. It's not preachy. Yeah, yeah, it won't get me. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You were about to say something, Eric. No, I, I, I think one of the challenges uh, of Don Don uh, and and us uh, in in producing movies like this is is really uh, it, it's it was a tough journey for us. Um, we we started uh, on the job one. We nilakun namin yon for four years. No one wanted it. Where's the love story? Where's the where's the where's the best friend? Na kailangan kwentuhan ng alam mo yun. Uh, are we ready for an action movie? Uh, this is too dark. Uh, no. Um, it 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 was able to be produced after four years. And akala namin okay yes we can keep on doing our kind of films. No, it took this one for another four years. for another one <laughs> after eight years for us to finally say that okay, some people really love the kind of stories we want to tell, right? Parang yung iba incrementals lang eh. We we did John Lloyd. Oh, it's so dark. Grabe ng kinuha nung John Lloyd from from Basha and Sinungasa. From Popoy, from, from, po, from Popoy, pinag-aapang mo sa kweba, Mati. Sobra, sobra naman yun, oh, kinalbo mo pa. Di ba? Sobra naman kayo. I mean, yeah. But to add to that, though, yeah, honestly, putting up these kinds of movies, now, the ones that we do, it's hard to put the financing together. Because so that's the major challenge. Sobra major challenge because it's not the kind of movie that would really churn out you know, the box office expectations of a lot of producers, you know, but then, uh, you know, for me and Eric, it's, we're more challenged with this, you know, I mean, when we did On the Job One, it went out to Cannes, you know, a lot of people, especially a lot of different countries bought it and actually exhibited it in their, in their countries, though. So, we saw what type of films uh, that, that we think would really travel and actually showcase, you know, the Filipino creativity and the, the talents that we can bring out there. So we used on the job one to be a vehicle, diba? From there, we were on the map and we were able to do, you know, on the job two and the others that we do. I'm itching, the, the, the follow-up question is, it takes international success first for Filipinos to take you seriously? Is that uh, well, for us, it or, it, it, or Filipino audiences to pay attention? I think it takes uh, international competitions and success to get financing for your film. It's spoken like a... No, no, but I want to thank, of course, thank you, Globe, for, for believing in us on this one. And then... Uh, you know, uh, we want to do more of these kinds of film. You know, that's so that we no, can... just just as an addition to Don Don. I mean, I, I think I failed to mention it in my speech, uh, opening speech. Um, uh, for a movie like this, for a series like this that has been bought by HBO, imagine that there's already a season two that they're going for for 2023. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was supposed to be my next this question. This is good. Ah, whoa, the love of you. What? You know, you never told John Arsenia. How do you know that this is the announcement? How do you know that this is the day of the announcement? And then, the most important is what? And by Feb 24, this coming Feb 24. This is showing in HBO Go, right? Right now, right? Feb 24, this will be the first HBO Asia Originals that will launch in HBO Max in Europe and in North America. So, Congratulations! 
So tell everyone, tell everyone of the Filipinos to go and alam nga man natin lahat naman tayo maraming OFW relatives. No? Uh, we have families all over the, the globe. <laughs> Wonderful. So when will John Arcelia start filming? Uh, we might be shooting April. Oh! oh not this year. <laughs> Of course, uh, finding the next topic to put out there, you know, with the same uh, characters that we're thinking of. No? But then, yeah, again, you know, we're really happy the man of what happened to uh, on the job. And I think right now, at least we were able to put the Philippines in the map with John or Celia yeah. right now, so being world class. Yes. <laughs> and I think right now, we're in a position to actually showcase, no? Uh, uh, Filipino talent abroad, no? and I know this hopefully can be an awakening to our peers in the business that you know we can do it. You know we can really it can be done. Yeah, we can cross borders and actually showcase our talents out there. And bigger projects. Yeah. I, I, I think yes. that's what we've been trying. We're, we've been missing that all these years. I mean, our films. We're hoping na di ba nag pandemya, di ba? Just like in war. People are braver and more encouraged, bolder to invest. Sa Pilipinas, balitat! Diba? Our films got smaller and smaller, the budgets are smaller. Diba? It's all stuck in one room. I just hope that we now have like a chance out there because we're not just limited to the country. Um, all the, the big ones are coming in, uh, so everyone, I hope you all should be hopeful. Yeah. One last question for Don Don before I turn, I forgot completely that there could be two questions from the audience and you can use the QR code, I'm so sorry, on the microphone um, so that we can uh, read your questions. If, or you can just approach the microphones there on the floor. Okay. What advice would you give to filmmakers so that they can, you know, somehow emulate the success that you've gotten? Uh, follow your passion, number one. Uh, continue dreaming. You know, it's uh, not impossible to actually, you know, get your films out there and, uh, and then actually show what you can do. No? Uh, for me and Eric, you know, it's, it's been a journey. It's not a short journey. It's been a long journey, honestly. You know? So, with on the job, we yeah we, we were lucky to, enough to find a partner in Globe to actually believe in our vision, and it was you know hard really to put the financing together. But uh, again, you know, for for a film like this, you no, know, honestly, you know, it it's like you know we spent like almost two million dollars just producing this. You know, it's unheard of. But you can you can see. You know, when you do a quality film, uh, it's something that you'll be proud of you know, when you see it competing with other films out there. So, I think... Uh, but right but now, I think the other advice I could give filmmakers, artists most especially, is to find a don't do Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. He lives in yeah. Because no matter how much you pitch to other people, they picture things differently. Yeah. So you, you have to, to be true to the vision. Yeah, you need to develop a trust with a producer that when you say, no, it's going to happen in a bridge. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I understand. You, you get what I mean. So this is actually a wake-up call for the industry that we can do it. So I think for our peers, Telaga, uh, you know what to do. Right? Just, just make sure that you put, you put something that you think that's interna international meaning. Worthy, you know, don't don't make shortcuts. Mm, yeah. Don't make shortcuts. I think uh, I think uh, 
uh, I, I believe in a lot of talents here in the Philippines, Taman. So I think uh, there will be more of these kinds of films that will that will come out no? in, in, in in the coming future, and you know it all starts here. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Now we have a question from the floor. Oh no! <laughs> Sorry. Any questions? Um, I believe we have members of the media present. All right. Well. Parting shots from each one. Let me start with Lot Lot and down the um, panel up to Don Don. Um, Ms. Hess, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank, of course, Sir Don Don, Reality, and Derek Eric. I was once a legal baby, now I'm a reality baby. <laughs> <laughs> from Lot to Sir Don Don. So, but in all honesty, uh, maraming salamat for making me part of On The Job 2. I was already a fan of the first franchise and I'm just so grateful to be part of the second one and more hopefully, God willing. So, um, maraming maraming salamat po. Looking forward to how your character will develop in the next <laughs> season. <laughs> Eric. Um, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for staying this long. Uh, I really hope you always go out and watch Filipino content wherever that is uh, and uh, stay tuned for a lot more uh, coming your way this in the next few years. Uh, it has gone really exciting for uh, the industry uh, because after the pandemic everyone just wants to go back and give the audience really great stories. So, uh, stay Don't forget tuned. to announce your Baguio um, uh, screening. So, after this, uh, on the job, we'll be going to, um, th there's uh, three more festivals uh, abroad that it's going to. There's Freeport in Switzerland. There's, we're going back to Italy again for um, Udine. Uh, and then uh, Macau. Is, is showing it, uh, just like in the MoMA setup, uh, Macau will be showing it side by side with, ten, uh, with nine other films, uh, which is the best uh, from Asia. And then uh, this end of um, March, uh, On the Job will be the closing film for Montañosa Festival in Baguio. Uh, I will be there as head jury for the competition and I will eat a chaya and I will have a lot of fun. Well, I'm sure you can see something in the challenge because it's really frustrating that you just appreciate these kinds of films. But somehow, sana, if we can get some lessons, sana may channel din natin sa real life. Uh, and if we need to, uh, sana ma-appreciate siya ng mas maraming tao para makatulong din siya sa pag-decide ng, ng, ng masa mo. Iba, pipili ka ng isang uh, tao para asahan mo na, na, na maglingkod sa iyo. So somehow, uh, baka kasi ang mangyari lang is mag-proliferate uh, yung Philippine film because we're using our, our the, the kind of society that we have, showing it to the whole world and yet our country will still uh, stay the same. It, it's so sad. So it's really a challenge for us. This is not an advocate film, of course. I, I believe so. Sabi ko, doon kami nagkakaisa nila, nila doon, doon nila. Now, you also have to entertain people. After all, this is a movie. This is a movie. This is a film. But somehow, may nakukuha rin tayo. We impart knowledge. I mean, we liberate uh, some, some mind. Let's uh, do something about it. <laughs> Thank you, Seesaw. <laughs> so, uh, Shara, first of all, I want to thank uh, CCP and Mr. Ernest Escalar for putting this together. Uh, thank you also for our uh, uh, diplomatic guests that attended this evening. Uh, I think uh, one message to the guy I just want to share. You know, I think it's Right now, we're in a crucial point that we think that cinema is dead. I hope our audience will continue to support Filipino films. 
and we need all this support so that we can, you know, come back from this pandemic and come back strong. And uh, please support, you know, uh, all Filipino content on your favorite streaming platforms. We need that so that we can, you know, do more uh, content that so we can showcase more talents abroad. That's it. There's one question I didn't ask you. What did Mother Lily say? Well, you know, your mother is always happy to know what I do. And uh, she's not really someone who is very hands on. You know, so. But with I, the success of yeah, With the success of, you know, uh, the films that we, we do, I mean, you know, we, we, have, we have done Shabby someday and Eric joins us. Some, so I think we're, we're just happy that, you know, she's here to support us while doing all the stuff that we want to do. Well, we thank the panel before us. Thank you so much. A big hand of applause for their very candid answers. Kulang lang ng kaunghang kay Eric Mati. Abangan na lang sa Instagram. Thank you so much for a very rich and enlightening discussion. So we have, uh, once again, Don Don Monteverde, Director Eric Mati, Lot Lot De Leon, and of course, uh, John Arcelia. And thank you also to all of you who are physically here at CCP and to those who joined us via the CCP social media platforms. Thank you very much as well.